Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and today I'm excited to be part of a blog hop featuring Hero Arts and Ellen Hudson products and a whole big list of amazing designers. The blog hop details are on my blog, so be sure to pop over and check it out. And comment along the way so that you'll have a chance to win one of three $25 gift certificates to the Ellen Hudson shop. I use this Color Me Flower Cling Stamp from Hero Arts. I usually love symmetry and order, and I bought this flower because it is very symmetrical and orderly, but this card didn't end up very orderly, as you'll soon see. I got out my Misty and I removed the mouse pad to give room for the cling stamp. Then I used some repositionable tape to attach my panel of Ranger watercolor cardstock to the Misty base, so that it wouldn't move around. I wanted to position it in the center of the Misty so that I could stamp off the edges. Then I placed the stamp into the prime position on my cardstock. At this point I wasn't sure if I was going to be using it as a focal point or just as part of a background, but I put it there to give me options later on. I chose markers in what I call my summer rainbow. Yellow, orange, bright pink and purple. These markers are vibrant and bold and they're great for faux watercolor techniques. I use them to color randomly on the stamp using all four colors. I worked from lightest to darkest, and I was conscious of trying not to mix the purple with either the orange or the yellow, just in case it got muddy. I just tried to make sure that I had the whole stamp covered with colour, and then I spritzed it a few times with a Nouveau Light Mister bottle, before stamping it onto my cardstock panel. This gives kind of a runny look, which I think is kind of artistic. I could have gotten a cleaner impression if I had stamped without adding any water, so you always have that option as well with these markers. I cleaned the stamp and I repositioned it for another impression. This flower is quite big so I only got one full impression on the cardstock panel and the rest will be stamped off the edges. Squirting water on the stamp obviously also goes all over the misty door and that makes it slippery and your stamp may move around. So it's a good idea to lift up your stamp and dry off the back of it as well as drying the misty door so that you won't have any unexpected movement when you're stamping. Oh, and here's another great thing about these markers. Even though I was working lightest to darkest each time, I did end up with some darker colors contaminating the tip of my yellow marker. No problem. I just scribbled off on a scrap piece of paper until the color was back to its original shade. Now you're probably getting a bit tired of watching this process, but this is the flower that changed the whole direction of this card, and all because I added more water to this one than I had to the others. When I stamped it down, the look was very different to my previous flowers. It was much more filled in and less open. I blotted it with a paper towel so that the excess wouldn't run, but at this point I definitely felt like the panel was out of balance. I finished with the final flower and then I gave some thought to how I could balance it out a bit, since that one flower felt much heavier than the others. To me the obvious solution was to add some more water to the rest of the flowers and try and get a similar look on them. I spritzed the whole panel this time and I let the colors bleed and run for a couple of seconds before I got out my heat gun and I dried it. Then I spritzed it again and dried it again. Man, there was a lot of water on this and it took quite a bit of time to get it dry. But I was finally happy with the messy look of it. Once it was completely dry, I put it back into my Misty, and I prepped it with an anti-static tool so that I could do some heat embossing. I placed the stamp down on top of the panel, approximately back in the position of that first flower I had stamped. I used magnets to help hold it in place, because I knew I would need to stamp it at least twice with my WOW embossing ink to be sure to get a really good impression on that bumpy surface. Then I sprinkled some gold embossing powder over the top. I placed it in my foil lined shoebox lid so that I wouldn't have to try to hold on to it while I heated it with my heat gun until the powder was all melted and smooth. I decided to cut a circle out from the panel to pop up on my card and I taped my circle die down with some purple tape trying to put it in places where there was no color. I don't think it would have caused a problem but I just wanted to be safe. At this point, I noticed that this circle was really quite off-center on the panel, so I used a pierced rectangle die to trim the panel and correct that. Plus, at this point, I knew I was going to want some clear space, and this would give me a white border around this very busy faux watercolor panel. 
For my sentiment, I chose an Essentials by Allen Celebrate die, and I cut it three times from white cardstock. I coated one die with embossing ink, and then I realized I was going to need a handle to make the heating process a bit easier. I attached the die cut to a strip of cardstock with repositionable adhesive, and that just made it a little easier to hold onto, while I sprinkled more embossing powder on top, and then heated it with my heat gun until it was all melted. I considered putting a second coating of embossing powder on to add some more dimension, but I was worried that the small size of the letter centers would mean that the powder would just fill them all in, so I stopped after that one coat. I used Nouveau adhesive to stack up the three die cuts, and I tried a tip that a few of you were kind enough to suggest to me after I had a big glue squishing incident in a previous video. I put the tiny dots of liquid glue onto the back of the die cut, and then I tapped it onto my work surface to take off some of the excess before putting the two die cuts together. I find it easiest to work from one end of the die cut to the other, making sure that each letter is lined up properly. And in the end, this method worked really well, and I had no squishing out this time, so thank you to those of you who suggested that I give it a try. Before putting the die cut sentiment onto the circle panel, I needed to line it up within the background panel to make sure I got the placement right. It took me a second to piece it back together, but then I got it, and I placed the die cut onto it on a slant that matched the lines of the embossed flower underneath. To assemble the card, I used my tape runner on the back of the background panel, and then I lined it up carefully on my white A2 card base before pressing it down. Is it just me, or does this background look a bit marbly? I popped up the circle portion with foam tape. This is one of my favorite things to do when I have a continuous background like this. By cutting and popping up the focal area, I created a bit more dimension and interest without really adding anything at all to a card that is already quite busy. And as a final finishing touch, I added a few sparkling clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. Now no one can call this card clean and simple, but it certainly has impact. These happy colors practically scream summer, and the background technique gave a result that is both abstract and still organic. Now don't forget to head to my blog to check out the list of participants and hop along and comment for a chance to win. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to this channel for more inspiration. Product links are below in the description and also on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.